Looking at some other upgrades, the lower pins could be swapped out on the Zion if you wanted, and I found a nice set for $17, giving you another high-end product masquerading as budget with CMMG. I just left mine stock because in reality they work just fine, but it's pretty wild that CMMG has these for less than $20, and they're, they're nice, they're dimpled and everything. Looking at the Prime Rams website when I was looking for other options, everything else was like $50, and that's... That's stupid. Well, besides the strike, the, the strike industry ones were there, but we're not trying to get made fun of today. Hey wizards, so recently I showed you the IWI Zion and I talked a whole bunch about all the crazy features you get on that with the two stage match trigger and the full Arca rail all for about 1200 bucks. My only real complaint on that whole rifle were some of the mil spec controls and features that we could upgrade <laughs> along with removing that A2 birdcage. So today we'll take a look at some of the best budget AR-15 upgrades for our IWI Zion SPR and see how crazy it gets in the end. And I think by doing a bunch of upgrades, I'll be able to better answer that question if the IWI Zion or the Zion SPR is kind of that best starter rifle for just about everyone to give them a solid base that they can then upgrade to give them some of the best ratio of price and functionality probably of anything else on the market. As during our Zion SPR review, I noted the only thing I would probably even change were some of the more basic controls, and that's all it would need to compete with rifles at three times its cost. Let's see if we add more components and make that gap even wider though. So I did a bunch of research and I read a ton of your comments about a lot of the good parts I could upgrade this thing with. And then I went over to the primary arms website and started to scour that whole place for different products. Now what's interesting is scouring the primary arms website, I found a bunch of products that are pretty much the same as the super high tier brands. They're just OEM, so they have a different logo on them. So with some of these, you may not be the coolest kid on Instagram, but those guys are losers anyway. Big thanks to primaryarms.com for providing us with all the upgrades we're showing you today. They have an insane inventory of everything from optics to roll pins to help you put together every part of your build. We'll tally up kind of the total at the end, so we'll see how crazy we can make this rifle for as little as possible. Now for my biases, I don't have any connections to any of these companies. I just picked them out on the Primary Arms website and Primary Arms sent them to me, so I, I hope they're good. Now that we have everything, I'm gonna show it all to you, upgraded on the IWI SPR, we can go test all the accuracy out and compare it against the absolutely insane performance of the Criterion Core setup. I'm definitely excited to do all the accuracy testing so we can really see how it performs, but let's get started on our upgrade. And I'm really happy to be changing this part out. Let's get rid of that mil spec charging handle so I can go throw it in a river. For our charging handle upgrade, we use the Expo Arm Super. This is really just a rebranded Geisley supercharging handle, but now you don't have to be ashamed of your life choices. Now the Expo Arms version of this used to be like $20 cheaper than the Geisley version, but now they're almost the same cost and that's, that's a little bit frustrating. So where the Expo Arms Super it used to be a good deal, I think the probably the Aero Breach is probably a better choice if you wanna have some good performance and then save a little bit of money. And for a hundred bucks, the new Griffin V2 suppressor ambi charging handle is probably a better choice at that higher price point. I'm realizing I'm starting this upgrade video great with only high price stuff. Let's just say 60 to a hundred bucks for a quality ambi charging handle. The Expo Arms is a literal copy of the Super though, so it's probably why Bill wasn't getting enough cash. This gives you the exact same ambidextrous function while also keeping gas from blasting you in your face. The levers are slightly extended also to give you additional room around optics and other devices. I've used the Geisley Super and the Expo Arms version in a couple different setups and they've performed well, but I know I mentioned the Griffin and much like what we've said, Geisley really loves to rip everybody off. So I'm pretty excited to swap all my Geisley Supers out for the Griffin Mark II charging handle later on. Also, I am absolutely team LaRue trying to get the wheels back on this train. 
Don't sleep on the Aero Breach either. It's an absolutely good charging handle and it's a little bit cheaper. And Hop and Brass Facts did a good video on that where they compared a bunch of different charging handles and they really did like that one. I would like to know for you guys all in the comments if you can still clear all your optics and stuff with the Aero Breach. I just haven't tested it out. All right, let's move on to the next one and look into some actual budget upgrades. For the safety selector, I went with the Expo Arms Upgraded Ambi Safety. This uses the same standard 90 degree throw, but gives you that mil spec function and reliability on either side of the weapon system. At 20 bucks, it's a pretty solid upgrade and it's only a couple more bucks than a single sided safety anyway. You also save a good bit over the BCM version, which is, I'm not gonna say exactly the same, but I don't know if I see a difference. I'm glad that one's actually budget, unlike the charging handles I was showing you. And interestingly, I think you righties would like a safety selector switch like this more than I would as a lefty. And I say that because for accurate shots, I often put my thumb on same side, letting me use a standard righty safety. This Expo Arm safety gives righty the same functionality without adding in any reliability concerns. I would 100% recommend you Loctite that one screw that's holding the right side in though. For the next bit of upgrades, let's do the controls. And here I went with more of an ambi focus because I'm a lefty. And I also went with CMMG products. And what was really interesting is they're like a quarter of the costs of products that look exactly the same. For instance, starting out, I swapped out the mil-spec mag release for the CMMG AR-15 ambi mag catch. This has a much smarter and lower profile pivot position than my Troy and forward controls design, super expensive ones. With the CMMG, I didn't have any weird problems like with the Troy and the forward controls designs of mags just not seating or just, just falling out. CMMG worked perfect. And at what, like 40 bucks? The CMMG is just an absolute ton better than the supposed premium ambi mag releases. Plus, I won't say anything again here, but this is the highly regarded Norgon Ambi Safety. I, uh, well, I like the CMMG a lot for half the price. I'm just going to assume CMMG licensed it from them. I'm, I'm not going to worry myself with that. Moving to the bolt catch bolt release, I found another great deal with the CMMG zeroed AR-15 bolt catch. This bolt catch gives you an enlarged catch with an expanded bolt release paddle to make it easy to lock and release the bolt. This part is also $15. So you save $40 compared to the forward controls design one that I was using and it and works just as well. And I think we could call that my redeemer for showing you all those expensive ass charging handles. Looking at some other upgrades, the lower pins could be swapped out on the Zion if you wanted. And I found a nice set for $17 giving you another high-end product masquerading as budget with CMMG. I just left mine stock because in reality they work just fine, but it's pretty wild that CMMG has these for less than $20 and they're, they're nice, they're dimpled and everything. Looking at the Primer Arms website when I was looking for other options, everything else was like $50 and that's, <laughs> that's stupid. Well, besides the strike, the, the strike industry ones were there, but we're not trying to get made fun of today. As we noted in the IWI Zion review, the rest of the lower doesn't need much with the included B5 grip and stock, along with the full Arca rail. The last bit I did change out was the muzzle device, and here I went with the Expo Arms Forward Controls Designs Chemo Mount. I don't know why I picked this, because it's actually more expensive than just the dead air one. So instead of paying 110, you could save some money and just get the regular dead air chemo mount. I use dead air silencers, so I had to get a chemo attachment mount muzzle device. I swear to you that the Expo Arms one used to be cheaper, not, not more expensive. Regardless, the Expo Arms muzzle device is a partner designed with forward controls designs to give you ports when removed and also be able to easily attach a dead air silencer using the chemo attachment system. In order to keep our accuracy testing as consistent as possible, I'll use the Sandman S on the IWI Zion SPR and then use the shorter Sandman K on the longer Criterion Core 20 inch setup. But that's all of our upgrades and I'm really excited how the whole SPR turned out. 
it's interesting to look at it because it really has more functionality than most of my other weapon systems. Like full M-Lock slots, two-stage match trigger, ambi mag release controls and charging handle, full Arca rail, V5 furniture, and a chemo attachment system. So remember though, we started with this pretty insane base with the IWI Zion SPR 18 inch version of like $1,200 to $1,300. Wait, the 16 inch version is only $900? <laughs> what the hell? Let's tally these upgrades though and see what we got. We got our $60 to $100 charging handle, $20 Expo arm safety, $20 CMMG Ambi mag release, $20 CMMG bolt catch, $80 to $100 chemo muzzle device. I don't know why that's more now. And hell, I'll even throw in the $17 pins, meaning our upgrades are anywhere from $240 to, I don't know, about $300. So then going on the high side of costs, this gets really interesting, our fully now crazily upgraded Zion SPR with a two-stage match trigger, full Arca rail, and full Ambi is $1,500. And yeah, 1500 is still a lot of money, but it's insane when you look at the comparative market. The cost of the upgraded IWI Zion SPR is still less than what a lot of the other rifles come in the 18-inch configuration, just stock. And then to foot stomp it even more, the standard Zion would be like 1200 bucks for Ambi, full M-Lock, and a suppressor-ready setup just a little silly when you start looking at the prices compared to everything else. So what are my thoughts? Is the IWI Zion and the IWI Zion SPR the best starter rifle for the price? I really think that it is. The Zion SPR offers you such a wide gap in terms of price and performance to other setups on the market. Adding in smart upgrades to our setup only further solidifies the Zion and Zion SPR as some of the best starting platforms available, period. The more rifles I see and review to, I'm often finding myself comparing them to the Zion and asking myself like, yeah, that's cool, but why would you want to pay twice as much for that when you get less than this guy? But that's my thoughts anyway. I, I really do love these setups and I'm interested to hear what you guys all think. But that's everything now complete and assembled and ready for accuracy testing. So stay tuned for the next chapter with the Zion SPR and see how the accuracy stands up against a true monster of our 20-inch Criterion core setup. I really am pretty excited about that, I'm not going to lie to you. And I did line up a couple different shooters, so we're all going to go out. We should get a lot of different data about how that accuracy actually goes. So I'm excited to move on to the next step. So I want to say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and all of our YouTube members. You guys make it all possible. We can show off all these cool rifles and compare all this stuff so we can find out what's good for you and let you know what you should buy. And I want to say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about the IWI Zion, if it's a good starter rifle. I want to hear about it. All right, everyone. Take care. All day. Performance of the Criterion Core setup. Dude, it's literally, lit, like, it can't get closer to overhead. Like, I could point at it. There it is. Just wave at it. I could throw a rock straight up and just hit it. That's obnoxious. I'm going to tell you right now. CMMG is absolutely going wild with these prices. Like looking at things online, they just, they're just wildly different than everybody else. I need to be promoting them an absolute ton more if they're the only company out there that's just not screwing everybody over. Plus, plus it all works really, really well. All right, you guys, I'm excited to do some accuracy testing. Get out of here. Enjoy.